Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Black Nerd Talk. I'm your host and co-host. Um, Bun Bun Six Two Three, and I'm Dre Day every day. Yes, and today <laughs> we're going to be talking about how AAA games are very. What's the word I'm looking for? Not lackluster, but like irresponsible. They become complacent. A yeah. bit lazy, a bit uh, unimaginative. And just to throw it out there for the viewers' pleasure, we had a little blooper to where <laughs> we tried to join and her <laughs> and your camera wasn't showing and we had to start over. And that's that contributes to why she forgot her name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's been a morning. <laughs> You're right. So speaking of broken AAA titles, the first thing that comes to mind for me will always and forever be Cyberpunk 2077. That was inexcusable. That released the game so fucking broken that customers were taking their games back to Best Buys and Walmarts and getting actual refunds for open disc games. I have never seen that before in the history of gaming. That was how bad it was in PlayStation. I believe Micro. I believe all of the major companies pulled the digital file out their storefronts, and it's crazy because the game is in great shape now. Like people are like, "This is what it was," because it's a gift and a curse the online thing. Because now, the, instead of the game having to be absolutely right on release day, mm-hmm. you can release it broken and just patch it over time. And that yeah. that's my problem. Right. It's unacceptable because that would never like work in any other work environment. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't work in any other work environment. It wouldn't work in any other uh, gaming era no. prior to on uh, PlayStation Three before the patches. Mm-hmm. So like, just just think if um, what's your favorite PS Two game? Kingdom Heart One, Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. What? Think of that release broken on PS2 and you just spent um that was the game was forty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I'm paying today the price in the sixty nine ninety nine, it's unacceptable. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, it, it's it, the funny thing about it is just speaking directly to the issue, the online thing, and it's like I wonder if developers are using that as a crutch, you know, because they know they can patch it over time and they're trying to, because they might want the crowd to fund it. So like those like first it's days. not even the developers. I feel like it's whoever the CEO yeah. of the companies. It's the, it's the, you, you, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Because a lot of developers are under publishing companies, right? Yeah. And the, the the big wigs that want the sales figures, the stuff, hey, get this done. That's what happened with Kojima over at Konami. Mm-hmm. They were just riding this back to where Metal Gear Solid Five back in 2015, it really, it, it wasn't broken in release in terms of the gameplay was right, but the story was like, this didn't quite end the way a Kojima game really ends. You know, so it happened. It actually happened to have a reverse effect on the Kojima side of things. But yeah, you you absolutely right. I think it's the it's the Activisions, it's the EA's uh sports. It's not like the little small developers, yeah, or the developers underneath because you know they have a brand that they want to uphold. Yeah, I feel like I noticed it a little bit in Kingdom Hearts three too. Not necessarily. It wasn't a broken game at all, but it wasn't. You could it tell didn't. it wasn't the game it was supposed to be. Okay. Like it was supposed to go in one direction and then they um, had to pivot in the middle of it. And so like things weren't cohesive. Certain story elements didn't make sense. And it was just very like, you could tell that Disney came in in the middle of it and said, no, fix this. Cause this is our, P- our IP and this is how the Disney princesses act. And it's not, we're not portraying them in any other kind of way. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's why I like the the indie developers are 
I did, like I said, we said it in the last video. That's why I just take my hats off to them because, you know, these guys are taking these little budgets that they have and they're funding it themselves. And they're like, you know what? It might take me five years to make it, but I'm going to dedicate myself to this and I'm going to put this game out right. Yeah. Now, granted, it definitely doesn't have like the graphical, graphical fidelities of, say, a AAA title with a three dimensional space, but just to sit up and think about the story, the uh, the gameplay, and it's simple, but hey, they're they're doing what they can with what they have. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's when you can look at the AAA and you can't depend on them. You can look at the indies to be like, you know what? I can spend 19 bucks on a finished game. I can spend mm -hmm. 15 bucks on a finished game. I can spend 29.99 on a finished game. I wonder what the remedy could be because, you know, they're trying to move to streaming. And I, that's to, to me, I think that if they move to streaming, that will absolutely destroy the at launch quality. Because at that point, there will be no more um, first week sales. You know, there won't be like any major first week sales, which is the funding. So it's like, why even finish this game if, mm -hmm. if we're not even going to feel the. So, yeah, I absolutely don't support game streaming. I mean, I hate to say – so let me let me say it like this. There are people for, – for the consumer, yes. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people that just can't afford to go out like me. I just got, in the last few months, Dead Space Remake, Metroid Prime. Uh, I got Hogwarts Legacy, and I got – I'm got, uh, getting Atomic Heart. I can do that because I'm buying it myself. But for that parent or that person that's just kind of living check to check, it might be easier to spend like nine ninety nine, and you can just kind of, you know, stream this, this, that, and the third. It just comes at a cost. Yeah. So I do. I support it for the consumer, but I just not for the the industry. And it's like I don't know where the middle ground would be. I feel like the middle ground would have to be taking the whoever the top at like whoever's at the very top taking them out of it out of the picture yeah and everybody go independent yeah well it's just it's just that they don't understand the inner workings of games all they care about is the money and the revenue coming right. from so they don't right. care that putting out a game before it's finished means that it's going to play really janky that it's going to drop frames that it's basically not playable they just want the money on the other side of it. See, now this, for me, factors into why I'm such a PlayStation faithful. Mm -hmm. Because, like, PlayStation's first party, um, I believe, let me see, Naughty Dog, um, Kojima's uh, PlayStation exclusive. I've heard, well, I ain't going to say I've heard. I've seen it on YouTube, and I've read the articles how um, they always say that Sony says, hey, take your time and make this game right, you know, as opposed to releasing it broken. Yeah. But versus like a third party, like say, um, I don't understand the CD Projekt Red because I believe that they're their own thing. Maybe they released Cyberpunk due to customer, um, to consumer pressure because I had seen that that game had been marketed as early as 2012 and it released in 2020. So and I've even seen comments on YouTube that say there are people that have there are people that have died waiting on this game. It's like a it's a bad it's a comment made in bad taste, but it's like hey, they released it and it's like if, like these worlds that these guys build like it's not gonna happen <laughs> overnight. I think they said Kojima made Death Stranding in like three or four years, and that is a fast for a AAA title. Yeah, because like the guy who made uh, Axiom Verge, which is an indie title, he took four years. I believe Stardew Valley took four years. That's one man by himself. Yeah. And he's building a practically a 16 bit Sega Genesis kind of style art direction and stuff like that. So I don't know. I just think that then people too, like us as consumers. Yeah. Not being so pushy. Yes, this is we. This is our medium, our happy medium, and we want our fixes. But we want our fixes to be the right way. So we have to learn some 
exercise some patience. Yeah. So, and especially if they say that they need to take more time to finish the game, like they did with Hogwarts Legacy, then it's like, then just take the time. Cause if you, if you put out a bad game, that's going to be the game's legacy. So like cyberpunk, it, it apparently it was a really good game and people really, really enjoyed it. But so many people didn't go back to it because it had such a terrible launch. It had such a terrible launch. And that's seeing, that's a thing too, because I've even seen with YouTube reviewers, um, you know, you have the at launch review Mm -hmm. and then especially the, honestly, the games as a service thing is kind of an issue too. Cause it's like now everybody, they want you to pour all this money into these microtransactions over these periods of time and stuff. So it's like, you can really kind of, they can kind of use that little window. Like, okay, Hey, we're going to update here. They can drip feed updates. And it's like, that can kind of be an excuse for devs to hide behind and say, well, you know, we're going to we're going to give you an update, but it's really the pack that should have been the day one uh, stuff. And, and a lot of games, too, when you get them and you put them in the because you, you have to wait for the initial download and then have a day one patch that's on top of you already had to wait for the disc to copy. But. um, Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> it's crazy to think about. Yeah, we have like, such a like a small, what's it like attention span now, and we want right. things straight away. And if we don't get it straight away, then we're gonna be mad, and we're gonna be typing fast and telling them how they need to put the game out. But if it's not ready, then right. this is the products that we end up getting, and then like right. it's happening more and more because people don't yeah. want to wait. Yeah, and then you're you're a great the game that eventually became a great game. You probably traded it in already because I know a lot of people are uh, trading because I don't I stopped trading in games. The value is just not it's not there. And on top of that, with me being a retro gamer, sometimes I want to go back. So I guess it would be a pleasant surprise to go back to a game that I bought that was broken. Like, oh, this is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's really it's a it's a catch twenty two, but like just. The idea of spending sixty nine ninety nine at launch and the game's broken, they absolutely they that that's that's unacceptable. It is. Sixty nine but that's seventy that's seventy five something out the tax. That's like buying a new car and they're like, Well, we'll put brakes yeah. in it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh we'll come fix the engine uh, in a month. But uh here's your <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> the uh what you think of the what's the last broken game you played? Or have you had that experience? Because I don't think I have because most of the games that I do play are like indie. So indie. They, they pretty oh, much yeah. get it together the first time. I want to speak to like as a side note, like to the developers um maybe being rushed. But like me, I just haven't enjoyed the recent some of the recent releases with uh, these AAA titles like The Horizon, Forbidden West. And that one had a tall order to fill because after I played Horizon Zero Dawn, that instantly became like my, well, not instantly. After I played through the whole story, uh, reflected back on it and was looking at all the lore and how much time I spent looking at different people talk about it, I was like, dang, this is really like my favorite game that I've ever played. And so when the part two was when Forbidden West was going to come out, I took my vacation around it and I just wasn't satisfied because they didn't, they didn't usually gamers, developers will take what they did well in the first and trim the bat, the, the fat off and just expand on everything they did well. And they didn't do that. They just kind of brought everything and just dumped more stuff on top of it without improving the mechanics. I mean, and then with God of War, I think God of War, it didn't release broken. And Oh, Horizon, it didn't, it kind of released broken, kind of, because there were people that were showing screen blackouts. I actually posted a couple of videos to my, um, to my Instagram. There was, <laughs> it's a funny glitch to where, like, you're inside this corridor. But it's on the outside. It's in a snowy biome. 
you go inside this uh, corridor where it's ceilings, you went through an elevator and you stand still and it's cool, but if you rotate the camera a little bit, then it's snowing, like the, the snow <laughs> popped in. But then you rotate the camera back and it's back empty. And I seen uh, another YouTuber, <laughs> there was an area where it was, it was <laughs> submerged in water until you blow up the ground. And after you blow up the ground, the water drains out. But after you go back, after the water has been drained out, I believe his game glitched to where one in one motion he's standing on the ground, but then when he spins the camera, his character is swimming in place. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like now for me, I could even for somebody if it's funny like that, then okay, cool. But like, yeah, if you get stuck on a mission and it's like you can't make any more game progress because you're literally locked in a a mission and it won't progress, or your character fell through the ground and you're endlessly. Mm -hmm. Fall and stuff. It's like I heard that Pokemon game had a bunch of wild glitches like that. Apparently, it was still playable and it was still really fun for people, but it was very much a broken. Game. Yeah, and um, I think another thing too is, but it's kind of hard. It's because I was gonna say we should stop supporting the broken game, but how do you know a game is broken until after you get it? Right. Like I really wish well, that was a. There is that Disney game that I'm playing right now, but it's still like in beta mode, so it's not officially released. It's just like a pre-release, so it's it's got a lot of issues, but it's still playable and fun. So I don't know if that would count as a broken game since it's not official. You know, I think I think that would help, but that would be a lot. I think that that would kind of maybe bring some excitement back to games because you know the demo we talked about on another video about the demo disc yeah. if more games if more AAA titles release betas to the public to where we can get their hands on and we complain about the beta then they can know what to fix at launch you know yeah. I think that I think that would be a cool little thing it would be a, a good way to get fa people who are actually interested in the game to be able to get their hands on it and get a taste of that excitement and then complain about the beta and then them fix it for the base game as opposed to yeah you know like I fixing the that, things that people actually have a problem with and not right. what you think needs fixed or right and you and also if you release a beta you're going to be speaking directly to the people that's going to because i i've never seen someone download a beta of a, of a game that they maybe they're uncertain about it but at least they've piqued their interest. So the people that's going to care enough to write back, those are the people that's going to be your day one buyers. Yeah. So yeah, I think that that could really help. It's that could really be a middle it. ground, maybe. But mm -hmm. I wonder if, if they would look at it as like a money pit, though. Yeah, if it's paywall, then hell no. Because I did have nine. to pay for the game. So like when it officially comes out, I guess maybe they'll patch it or something and then I'll have like all the updated stuff or whatever, but I still had to pay full price. Pre-order. That would be perfect for people who pre-order. The digital pre-orders at least. Like, hey, your digital because uh Call of Duty does it. Mm. Call of Duty does it often. And uh even though Call of Duty has its issues, the games don't ever release broken. Now, they may have, a, like this Modern Warfare, they had a menu issue, and then they had, you could, it's always going to be a debate on when you're shooting somebody, who gets shot first, and who, who gets the kill, and who, based on latency and all of the internet stuff, but as far as the, I've never seen a Call of Duty release broken. And I've never seen a complaint about it released and broken, but they release betas almost every game, you know. So, well, so I'll yeah, I think so. Yeah, if the, maybe if you do a digital <laughs> pre order, let's say you're locked into a at least a, a free beta, and yeah. that could be an incentive to pre order. It's like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna get a beta. I think that would probably be the best option, yeah, you know. So but, it's a little brainstorming out there. So if you guys want to go ahead and do that, don't forget who gave you the idea. Exactly. So. You, know, you heard it here first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see. Triple A game is broken. Mm, what would I say? 
you hadn't had any issues with any um indie games being kind of broken because I haven't. No, not that I can think of. I think the the Disney beta that I'm playing right now is the first instance that I've seen. But I don't the because I definitely I don't play that that. many AAA titles though. Right. Yeah, I just definitely want to be fair with the with the belt. I don't want to just be spiking on the triple A. <laughs> no, they know. should because they make more money. And so then if that's the case, then you need to put out a quality item. Like if right. I wanted a cubic zirconia diamond, then I'm gonna go yeah. over here and get I'm go pay you. Saying yeah. that this is a, a real diamond, then yeah. I don't sell me a cubic yeah. zirconia. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, don't have me paying real diamond price for it to be cubic zirconia. That's not cool, right? And you're sitting over here getting clowned by your uh, friends because you got on cubic zirconia mm-hmm. and they said you just marketed as real diamonds. Yeah, well, oh. what are, are the what games are you interested or excited for upcoming? Because right now, like, I believe I'm like okay. four or five days out from Atomic Heart. And I'm like, my plate's already full. I hope it's not broken. I think Danny was talking about that game, too. Actually, I think he's waiting on it. <laughs> that shit looks insane. I did hear in quick passing that there's going to be another, I think, Latent Brothers mystery game that's going to be put on to Switch. And it's like a little offshoot game that I played on my iPad years and years ago, where it's like a it's like a little mystery game, like Clue, where you're following the clues and solving the case. Yeah, I just so happened to hear somebody a video I was watching talking about that, so I'm gonna look that up and see when that's happening because that's gonna be on me. Okay, that's an in- that will be an indie title, right? Okay, well, hopefully they nail that. We'll see. Sweet. Well, I think that's all I got on on this. We just want to, we just had to take an episode to pull our belts out. Yeah, you uh, need to do things right. This is inappropriate. I don't appreciate right. it. This is it's rude to your customer base for one thing. Um, you you don't put out broken products. You're making them pay full price and putting out broken products, and then you're like, oh, we'll fix it in post. That's not acceptable. Exactly. You can fix small things in post, like maybe like um like frame rate timing or maybe loading screen timing or something, you can make a patch for that. Or if there was something that so happened to be missed in the five years that it took you to make these games, then you can patch that. But if you're patching an entire game for the game to be playable, guess what, babes? You missed the mark. It's you missed the mark. Especially, especially when you go, let's just say a game has a twenty two a 2020 relaunch, mm-hmm. but it's perfected in 2022 or 2023. It's like, no. Right. I mean, yeah. Like nobody's going to if you got if you got burned at launch, you're not probably not gonna go revisit it. Yeah, <laughs> taking know? it back to cars, these cars would be recalled and then we're just <laughs> not dealing with them anymore. Whatever happened, what was the car? Was it like a cube right. or something? So yeah, I you know, like I said, I think they just they just need to touch, they need to use the Use us as gamers. We yeah. give the best feedback. We know what we want. So yes, yeah, start sending out those betas. And like I said, that I, I really feel like that would really insert a lot of excitement back into the gaming industry yeah. because it will give us more involvement and it and it'll be more transparency too. Yeah, It'd be like oh yeah, this right here. That's so, another thing. Um, shitting on you, AAA titles is indie gamers. <laughs> the the developers of indie games like talk with their yes. and they're very that open very, and back and forth. Very, that is a very common thing to where it's definitely an open back and forth of, you know, what do you want? And that's why I believe that they're successful. Yeah. Because, you know, when these titles, I mean, it's just kind of the nature of business when you get all the way up here and then you forget about us down here, not knowing, forgetting that the reason why you're up here is because we're the foundation. Yeah, not you to know, mention, no. so like, you, you've you heard of the game Five Nights at Freddy's? Yes. yes. That is a massive title, and it could probably rival yes. AAA titles. And yeah, it's and a it's a gamer it's, made by one dude. One guy, yeah, and it's like that game, I remember when that game just was a, 
a just a random uh a random indie game and now that shit is just massive it, it's got yes, merch it's got yes, folklore but, it's got a movie toys yes toys, toys. It is, like, and that's because he cultivated a very right. specific relationship with his audience where it was completely like a back and forth and right. playing games with each other and stuff like leaving clues and figuring it out and whatnot. And these big titles, these AAA titles don't do anything. They don't do that, yeah. Yeah, they need to have some sort of uh, back and forth. And, you know, that's what these social media platforms should be for. That's what I like, what I like about Twitter. Yeah. You know, a lot of what I what I like specifically about Twitter is like you can communicate with your favorite artists and your favorite creators and you know the discussion pieces. So maybe yeah, beta test and have some people working the social media that's actually taking feedback and yeah. actually listening. You know, yeah, because there are a lot of people that just talk crazy, but like you know, have some people that's really taking some listening at the feedback and then just be accountable to go back and play the game and be like, you know what, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. Get it together, guys. This is this is not it. Right. If any of you guys played any broken games, why don't you let us know in the comments? Because uh, you know what? I'm just I'm, I'm thinking about too there, there's an uprise in um games being kind of cut mid life cycle. Like you know that they're um they're pulling they're pulling the online component from the Marvel's Avengers game. Yeah, it's like something about that game is um I don't I can't remember. This game released what year is this? What is the fucking twenty twenty. But yeah and they're already they're pulling the, uh, online for it because I don't know. I guess it was broken. They never. I don't know if they never fixed it or. <laughs> so yeah, it's like now they just they're to the point like, hey, we made our money now. Let's just pull the support of it. It's like, bro, whatever this little company, is, Crystal Dynamics, Square. Oh yes, your company too. Uh, <laughs> Square Square Enix down there. <laughs> you say yeah. You think wow. I'm gonna- they go for the spend money on your shit. <laughs> but yeah, they got to get it together. Yeah. Yeah. But until the next episode. See you in two weeks. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>